Look at this beautiful package I have here. This eBay seller, that is who he is. And he says, oh, thank you, Curtis. And I open this up and it's like, oh, well, thank you again. How nice is this? What a great seller. Look at that. How cool is that? 10th anniversary. Comsat. Act of 1962. Oh, look. Hey, there's a, there's a little bitty satellite there, huh? I guess that's what that is. And you got on the back side. Dun, dun, dun. Flat Earth map. That's pretty neat. Comsat and Telestat. Um, and it even has this thing. I'm not going to read this yet, but I'll put it on there so somebody can read it. That is, looks like Benjamin Franklin or something. I don't know. So yeah, these are like under $10 for one of those from 1962. And it's got the flat earth map right there. I don't know what's up with the triangle, but that is so cool. It's actually really heavy too. Apparently it is, um, it's solid Franklin bronze proof. I mean, this thing's weighty. It's pretty neat. Um, it looks like there's even, no, that's just the plastic, I think. I just didn't know there's any other engravings. So yeah, that's, uh, that's really cool. See, I was just looking for satellite stuff and then I found that. So now, now I'm gonna share a message I've been waiting all day to share this, writing it out. And I just got home uh, a few hours ago from work and I got five pages here. And so I'm going to preach a little bit because I've just been so dry, um, been busy with other things and I haven't been able to, you know, really dig out the word, the meat of the word. So I'm going to share with you a lot of scriptures and I'm going to share with you the agenda of this world and get you saved and get you born again because this world is not going to make you born again this world is going to keep you in death and that is for certain because think about all all the people in the uh, who are you know Neil Tyson he doesn't believe in God and he wants you to believe in what he believes. And he's... Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I was a fool for a long, long time. Not learning. Wisdom and instruction, it's so good, it's so good. That's the thing, is people don't understand it because you've never experienced it. That's why you despise something you know nothing of. And I'm guilty of that, have been guilty of that. I did a message a while ago on the fear of the Lord some months back, I'll put that in the link. But there's an awesome theme of the fear of the Lord. Like I said, I've been thirsty for the scriptures and anxious to write a message. You know, I feel so dry and worn out by the world and its 
influences lately. You know, I've been digging into all this stuff and it keeps me away from this. And this is the bread and the water that our soul needs. It's so good for us. I mean, when we know it, we live it and practice it, but it's, it's something we have to draw from constantly because that's just how God intended it. His word abides forever. We're going to have it forever. So in this message, I'm going to share with you why flat earth is so dangerous to the current thought and held belief of the globe. It's all about mammon. What's mammon? Well, money, for one, but it's just not money, but it's riches, wealth, possessions. Because this current world, it's all about mammon, riches, wealth, and possessions. This current world system agenda is spreading like the cancer of sin that it is. 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, what do you mean? We've got to do something to live forever? No. Oh. Having faith in Jesus Christ and obeying him and learning of him, the eternal life, walking as he walked, the blessing, the gift. Now we do and we'll have it forever. It's beautiful. But what the world wants to teach us is what Jesus forewarns us about. Or forewarned us about. Luke 8, verse 14. Luke 8 is the parable of the sower. Jesus gives three examples of how you're not saved. And then the last example on what it means to be saved. The seed is the word of God. So Luke 8. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. It's like looking at this, reading it, understanding it, but not doing it. James uh, chapter 1 a really good example of this of just looking at it he says uh, looking into a glass or as a mirror reflection James 1 22 but be ye doers of the word not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass and he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So that's like looking and seeing that I'm sinful. Like, wow, I'm like really sinful. And then, yeah, like I'm not going to be doing that anymore. And then I go out, and I just keep doing what God just shown me who I was. Verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty 
and continue it therein. Being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You see that? Blessing and obedience. As if obedience is like some shackle and it's like, oh, well, now I got to do all this stuff. I got to follow all these rules. It's like, no, that is your freedom. Jesus Christ is our freedom to be blessed, to have love, and peace, and joy. Even in the midst of our enemies, even to somebody who persecutes us, who hates us, who ridicules us, who calls us stupid. Guess what the fool had said in his heart? There is no God. God speaks. His word speaks. I'm an insignificant messenger of the word of God. He's here. His word is here. That's the standard. That is the truth. It's what we love. If you believe, you love the word. It's our freedom. His word is a light onto my path. We're going to get into Psalm 119 a little bit too. The are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So we could say James saying a doer of the work. So yeah, doer of the work. So what does the work do? The work produces fruit. And what kind of fruit? Good fruit. Good fruit. Like things that are pleasing, that have no ill will or hate in it or deceit in it, but just good. Good fruit. I mean, there's all kinds of different fruit in the world, and there's all kinds of good things that Jesus being inside produces. So this is Luke 21 verse 34. And take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, which is like excessiveness in like food or eating, drinking, and then in drunkenness, overcharged with drunkenness or overcharged with the cares of this life, so that the day come upon you unawares. And what is that? The day of the Lord. The day of Christ. That everybody is going to be before when he returns. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. Jesus is going to come like a thief in the night. He wants his people to be ready. If you're calling upon Christ, you better be ready for him. Paul says in Philippians 4, Let your moderation be known to all. The Lord is at hand. Moderation, the opposite of excess. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You can't do it. You can't be double-minded. You can't have two eyes. I mean, we have two eyes, but you can't. If your eye is single, Jesus says, this is previously Matthew 6, if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. And he's talking about things that are good in that context too. But this is the, the start of Matthew 6, 24 in the paragraph. You can't serve two masters. If you meditate on this verse and really, really think about it, you really get a good idea of what he's talking about. I'm just breezing over it right now, but when you meditate on this, I can't meditate on the Word of God for you. That's what you have to do. It's glorious. 
No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So now, think about God, and then what he says in there, and get those descriptions of like being towards God and what's opposed to God. And then And then flip it around, and then put mammon first, and look at what's opposed. It's beautiful to think about. So now we're going to get into Acts chapter 2. And I'm going to highlight singleness of heart. I'm going to give you some context of this was like Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came. This is like the beginning of the church. It's so awesome. This is uh, verses 40 through 47. And I'll just give the warning right now before we get into it. I, th I think it'll be good. We must be cautious in the time that we're living. We must be cautious because there are deceivers out there who want to prey on our sincerity. And they'll actually pretend like they're sincere. And they're really not. Because there's a lot of deceivers out here right now. And they know they know this. And so they try to mimic it or they try to have a form of it but we have to rightly discern those who name Christ because if you name the name of Christ you depart from iniquity it's like 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 so don't just think oh well, I'm, I'm a Christian now and it's like all of a sudden we're just going to be like real tight and everything no you you got to be very cautious today. And it shouldn't be like that. Hey, kitty. This is my uh, cat, Mr. T. That's short for Trevor. Look at this beautiful creature that God made. So awesome. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation, from this perverse generation, from this wicked, froward, untoward, froward, deceitful, perverse, wicked generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. I forget if this was like either Peter. I think it may have been Peter. I can't remember who it was. It's one of the apostles. Then they gladly received his word. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. See, we will do well as a church to stay in the apostles' doctrine. I love listening to the apostles and learning from them. I mean, th th their words are preserved for us. For our edification, for our strength, for our steadfastness. To be able to navigate through... The mess that this world's in. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. So they steadfastly, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. That's the fear of God. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men. And every man, as every man had need, and they, continuing daily, with one accord in the temple, 
and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. That's it right there. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That is just so beautiful. We have to be very cautious today. We can still live like this. But you have to be cautious. And Luke 8, 15, back to the parable of the sower. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Now we're going to get into Psalm 119, verses uh, 161 through 168. This is a, this is a full uh, paragraph. And Psalm 119 is, is really beautiful. It's the Hebrew alphabet, and each paragraph is starts with the letter of each Hebrew word. And so it's very poetic. But the way Hebrew poetry is, Hebrew poetry rhymes thoughts and ideas versus words like we do in our English. Because we just rhyme words, but Hebrew, they rhyme thoughts. And that's why the Word of God is so beautiful. Because it's all about um, how you like think upon it and meditate on it and you know God revealing it to us. So remember, this is this is about mammon and everything. And I was I was in this today, and I'll just start. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. And that's the word I want to highlight, or the verse that I want to highlight, the sentence. Because it's like we rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. And this is for somebody, but Matthew 13, 44. Matthew 13, 44, that treasure. And so do we value God's word like a treasure? We must. How can we not? I hate and abhor lying, but I love, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation, and done thy commandments. I can't talk. And done thy commandments. My soul have kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Remember, great fear came upon them all. Fear of the Lord. For all my ways are before thee. See, everybody doesn't understand that God is, is before us. We're before God always. Like, we're never not before God. So flat earth, bring up flat earth again. So why is it dangerous? This is why. It will destroy their plan of mammon seduction and hurt their greedy agenda, all the while corrupting you. They need you to stay seduced. They need us to stay seduced. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 18, the first part of it. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, 
through much wantonness. Wantonness. Uh, we're going to get into a definition here. But don't forget about that. They allure through the lusts of the flesh. Think about everything they show you on the, on the devices that we have and the screens and their communication systems and their programming, their system. It's how they allure. And guess what? They make merchandise out of us. When they see us, they see money. It's what they see. So the quality or state of being wanton, that's what want, wantonness is from wanton, W-A-N-T-O-N, negligence of restraint, sportiveness, recklessness, lasciviousness. Now, lasciviousness is to work all uncleanness with greediness. It's kind of gross. So back to want, wanton. Untrained, undisciplined, unrestrained, hence loose, free, luxuriant, roving, sportive, uh, in a sentence, in woods and wanton wilderness, a wild and wanton herd, a wanton and a merry, um, two, uh, wandering from moral rectitude, perverse, dissolute, and then it gives a sentence, men grown wanton by prosperity. Specifically, this is number three, specifically deviating from the rules of chastity, lewd, lustful, lascivious. Four, reckless, heedless, wanton mischief. This is, um, I did a video too, I forget which one it was, but if it was back in June sometime when I was talking about being wanton. Because James talks about it at the end of, I think it's like chapter 4 or something like that, James 4. But I found this, and this is Ephesians 4, verses 17 through 24. I'm going to say the definition for lasciviousness again. Lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. And now, to quote Ephesians, but ye have not so learned Christ. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him. See, God, God teaches his children. As the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. That's your behavior and conduct, conversation, what you're doing. Former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and being renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. If we no longer care about mammon and begin caring about the will of God, doing it, and doing that which is good, that is true awakening, and Jesus Christ brings that by the power of the Holy Ghost, making souls born again, then we no longer regard the world and their global world at that. We need to turn off their seductions, the music, the shows, the news, the commercial ads. Look up the word advert, A-D-V-E-R-T, advertisements, now called ads. I'm not saying to shut it out completely, but you have to get away until you're strong enough to be around it without it consuming you. And that strength from God to do so, that's God giving you strength to do so. But NASA has created a monopoly of the earth on the earth.
the very mentioning of the idea of flat earth threatens their very deception system. Well, guess what? We're not believing what you tell us, NASA space liars, or what you show us. We are believing what God tells us and what he shows us. And that's not only spiritual revelation from this, but also through his creation, through his earth and his heaven above. We can go to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, and talk about setting our affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Can't go there yet, but... So, I'm just going to tell you right now, Elon Musk and Neil Tyson are some of the best spokesmen for the system that they're seducing the world with. Think about it. They... They want to put Starlink, uh, SpaceX, they want to get the internet all over the world. And why? For their own greed. No, it is beneficial to do that, but their motive isn't. Their motive is not. So I have uh, an embarrassing story to share with you it was my first real fight you could say I was um, I was in juvie and I was maybe 14 and we were at the card table and playing cards and stuff I mean I've been with these guys for months and they were playing cards it was like a it was like a table that had like four seats but the seats were like attached to the tables. You couldn't like move them or anything. So you could like just sit there on like little stools and there was four of them. We're playing cards and stuff and he takes this pop bottle, you know, like a normal 20 ounce. And I, I don't know what happened or what I said, but you gotta think, I mean, we we're just teenagers. And so something was said and I forget what, what was said. And it was, you know, just smarting off and somebody wants to try to impress the other people at the table. That's what it all was. It was all about like pride, this and that, or, you know, like who's bigger than who, stuff like that. But anyway, he was like, bam, smacks me like right in the forehead like that with this pop bottle cap. I and mean, he was just like, boom. And I don't, I don't know if I like backhanded him or if I just punched him, but I blasted him right in the chest. And he gets up and then I get up and I'm, I'm like walking backwards and he's coming at me and he's coming at me like this. He's like, I ain't going to hit you. I ain't going to hit you. And I'm just like walking backwards like this. I'm like, well, you know, it's like, he's telling me, he's telling me one thing, but then all of a sudden he's, he's doing another. And it was just like, all of a sudden, boom, I get hit and I fall down. And then I just kind of like did one of these and he's like, like kicking me. And then he ends up kicking me in my eye and my whole eye was like red and stuff for like weeks and you know the staff came they broke everything up and so yeah that, that's a very embarrassing story and but you know what was awesome is God showed me this today this is so cool um just think that that small little story that I thought was pointless is exactly what NASA's doing to us do you see it yet because I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it <laughs> it's just like NASA Globe Earth, Globe Earth, Globe Earth, Globe Earth. While they're robbing us, they keep telling us and showing us pictures, yet Flat Earth is BAM! Right in our face. Not only with the scriptures, but with what we see and experience. See, they keep telling you something and keep telling you something and keep telling you something and you're just like, Why do you think Elon Musk wants internet all over the world? Well, mainly to seduce, to bring in money. And you don't even need satellites. Those are like bonus incomes for them because they don't exist. 
and we have to pay for them or their so-called added expenses. I don't know how their greediness works. I mean, I, I have kind of an idea, but it's, it's so much deeper than what we really know. And this is what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. The gospel of Jesus Christ is sincerity. Fear of God. Being honest. No longer in hypocrisy. Born again. 1 Peter chapter 1 Verses uh, 22 and 23. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Unfeigned is without hypocrisy. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. What do you have to offer us, science? I'm sorry. Yeah, there's cool factual information that happens and, you know, we learn things. But what's better than that? What is better than the gospel of Jesus Christ? Nothing. Nothing. I'm going to read this again. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Not only the brethren, but all men, even, even you deceivers, enemies, anybody. We have love for you. We pray for you. We want good to come to you. This isn't, oh, well, you're just so evil and we just want you to go to hell and kick you. And it's like, no, 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 no. We want the Lord to change your heart. That's the desire of every Christian is for God to lavishly change your heart and be filled with his love. More importantly, his truth. And love for the truth. The gospel, yes, it's the life of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection. But if Christ changes not your life now, if you believe, his grace to you is vain. Galatians 2, verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of, of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now, this is a really beautiful passage of Scripture. And I want to highlight what's been hidden for so long. Because Paul is talking about having righteousness here. There needs to be righteousness. And that's what Paul's getting at. But he's saying it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God that brings about the righteousness. That's why he says... I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So there needs to be righteousness. 
Jesus said in John 15, verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. So this is that spiritual truth that only the Holy Spirit can show a person. Talking about a branch and fruit and abiding and some vine, this, that, and the other. What's that all about? It's the parables of Christ. It's the mysteries of the Spirit. That God will show you if you come to him. In sincerity of heart, the faith honesty, believing upon Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. You see that? Receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. See, grace and righteousness are right there together. So where is all the righteousness at? Grace demands righteousness. Romans 8 Verses 3 through 4. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, being born again. Amen. Wow, the law is fulfilled in Christians? Well, I thought Jesus did that for us. Yes, he did. And guess what? He says, hey, follow me. Follow me. You got the incorruptible seed. Come on. It's glorious. 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 20, or 2 Corinthians 5, verses 20 and 21. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's seed, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I'm going to close with Ephesians 6.24. It says, Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen.